Welcome to today's update. Now I'm not going to focus too much on the current daily situation now. We could do. I mean there's been a million uh, new cases, new infections in the United States in the last 10 days. and There's been a thousand deaths a day for the past month in the United States as well. And hospitalizations nationally are up uh, 214%. Just watched uh, one of the one of the uh, regular news outlets from the United States just before we came on. But I'm not going to focus on that today. I'm going to focus on what's going to happen in the next year. And in doing that, we're going to look at the vaccine. And we're also going to be debunking a couple of things. There's no electronics associated with this vaccine. There's no microchips in it. Um, if there is, I have no evidence for it. I mean, we can safely just discount such nonsense. And the, the other the other piece of misinformation that's going around about this messenger RNA vaccine is that it affects the DNA in your cells. It doesn't. It doesn't. And if you want to stick around, we'll, we'll have some evidence for that. But anyway, let's get on to um, what we've got some um, reasons for believing. So this is the Pfizer BioNTech messenger ribonucleic acid vaccine. Brand new, very impressive. First time this has been done. Now the UK, 10 million doses are going to be available this year. 30 million more ordered. Um, now, 10 million doses, of course, is only enough to vaccinate 5 million people because we do need two doses. So this is just making a start. But uh, this professor, um, one of the leading professors from Germany, from the BioNTech, um, the immunologist who's the founder of the firm, the, the BioNTech firm, who's one of the fathers of this vaccine. So what he says is likely to have some... Uh, yeah, we like we should be taken seriously. And he's just been interviewed on, on the, one of the BBC popular news outlet programmes. And we're going to look at some things he said. Now, if, if it's in italics, it's a direct quote. Now, he said there's no serious side effects to this. I mean, that is a big claim. That's a big claim. Um, now, while we accept what he says, and uh, I, I do believe this vaccine will receive regulate, regulatory approval, I would also say that I'm looking forward to the peer-reviewed literature on it to get something more um, statistical on that, which we obviously don't get an interview. But he did say this, we did not see any other serious side effects would result in pausing or halting of the study. Well, you can say that. I mean, that is known. That is a known fact. So, so fair enough. There was nothing worrying them that could indicate that the study had to be halted while it was investigated in terms of serious side effects. We have noticed some of the other studies have been halted while the researchers clarify whether the person got sick coincidentally or got sick as a result of a, a side effect of the vaccine. Um, but the, these vaccine trials, the, the main vaccine trials are now back on track again. So part of the reason perhaps the Pfizer BioNTech one has come out first is because they were fortunate and it just happened that people didn't get sick in their group uh, because people get sick all the time anyway. So, so that's probably part of the reasons they've been so quick. Anyway, key side effects. A pain in the injection site for a few days. Well, that's absolutely normal. That's just the inflammation caused by the immune response. If you've had the flu vac, you'll know this. You get an achy arm for a few days. Absolutely routine. Some participants, again, we weren't told how many got mild to moderate fever for one or two days. So some people feeling pretty rough for one or two days after the vaccine. But again, we're not told uh, how many. Um, uh, then he said, we did not see any other serious side effects would result in pausing or halting of the study, as we've said. So far, the safety profile seems to be absolutely benign. So all really um, very encouraging, it has to be said, that, that he's, uh, he said this. Now, um, what, what's he saying about the next few months? What's happening over the next few months? Because I think it's fair to say there's been some undue optimism about how quickly the vaccine is going to help us. It's not going to be a, an overnight thing. It's going to take a bit of time. So um, next few months, uh, he says that the professor says this winter will be hard. Uh, we will not have a big impact on the infection numbers in the next few months over this winter. But hoping to bash out 300 million doses by uh, April 2021. And he says this will start to have an impact. So we are looking at a bit of time before we get a big impact, according to him. Uh, biggest effect should be in summer 2021 as things are being well rolled out. And by then, of course, we should have several vaccines that we're using. So we'll get hopefully a greatly accelerated effect in the amount of people that are becoming immune. 
Um, he says they must have a high vaccination rate by the autumn, winter, uh, uh, fall time uh, 2021. Because we're going to get, cases will get less next summer anyway, because they do in summer um, in the Northern Hemisphere. But um, we should have, he thinks, the winter of 2021-22 should be normal. Wow. A normal winter because people are going to be immune. So we're not looking at an immediate time frame. We're looking at a bit of a, a progressive time frame here. And it's not, it's not, the situation is not that all of a sudden we'll be immune, one day we won't be immune and the next day we will be immune as a population. The level of transmission I would expect to go down progressively as more people progressively become immunised. Now, there's been some debate about whether this vaccine just stops people getting sick or whether it will stop the transmission of the virus. So what does the, um, the professor say about this? Um, will the vaccine prevent viral transmission? <clears throat> I'm very confident that transmission between people will be reduced by such a highly effective vaccine. So that sounds good. Maybe not 90%, but maybe 50%. So less transmission between uh, people, which is is good and of course the lower the better but basically he's saying he's not quite sure yet it looks like he's saying he's expecting it to be yeah he looks like he's saying it's expected to be 50 percent isn't he so um but of course that's going to have a big herd effect as more and more people get vaccinated uh, we should not forget that even that could result in a dramatic reduction in the pandemic spread of course now how long will immunity last antibodies will decline over time he says uh, will decline over time that's a direct quote so the antibodies will decline um, but we don't know really about the T cells yet um, but he is saying that uh, booster immunization should not be uh, should not be too complicated so that's kind of what we're looking at over the next over the next few months now I'm not going to do this in massive detail I'm going to take a bit of time just to to debunk this idea about the um, the vaccine affecting DNA, so let's let's look at this um, briefly now. Now, what this is just a bit of background biology first of all. So we have a cell, and in the cell we have the uh, the nucleus of the cell. Now you probably know that the DNA is in the nucleus, and it's this double stranded, double helix, double strand that's in the nucleus. Now, what normally happens is that the process goes on in the nucleus called transcription. Transcription normally occurs in the nucleus. Now, what transcription is, is the DNA converts its message or the information it contains into messenger RNA. Now, this process going on in the nucleus, so transcription is the uh, transcription is the the uh, the formation of the the messenger RNA, the messenger ribonucleic acid, and that takes place in the nucleus. So we end up with messenger RNA. And the reason it's called messenger RNA is it trots off from the nucleus into the cytosol, this area around about the cell here, with the message, and it then goes to a specialised organelle in the cells in the cell there called a ribosome. And the ribosome is a factory for, for producing uh, peptides which form together to form proteins. So that happens there. And this process that going on in here, the process going on inside the ribosomes is called translation. So translation is translation is where the message from the messenger RNA is translated into the correct sequence of amino acids in the proteins. So that's what happens normally. So that is the normal process. Now, what these RNA vaccines do is they have, um, the, the genetic code for the virus has been published and we know it's an RNA virus. So what these clever researchers have done is they've taken parts of the genetic sequence um, of the viral genome and they've copied those into sequences not enough to make the whole virus just enough to make a particular antigen that you want usually the spike protein so you translate just the length of RNA 
So what these vaccines have done is they've taken just a length of RNA, just a short length of RNA, and that RNA contains enough information to make, say, a spike protein. Enough to make a spike protein. But that spike protein, that single spike protein, has got a molecular architecture that the immune system can learn to recognise. So we just have a short length of RNA, and then that's put in a, a, in a fatty lipid uh, membrane like that and then that is uh, that, that is then injected and it'll just be injected into the top of the arm the same place my flu vaccine was so that's injected into the top of the arm and in the top of the arm you have two things you have uh, cells so this this fatty membrane here round about here can go onto the fatty membrane round about cells in the arm here and this RNA um, because these membranes will merge because they're both fatty, just like two soap bubbles, that means the RNA will go into here, this messenger RNA will go into here. But this is the messenger RNA that's been given by the vaccine. And that messenger RNA will then go to the ribosomes, and that will then be translated into protein. Now, there's a central dogma, Francis Crick developed this back in probably the early 60s, um, and, and the, the central dogma of genetics is uh, DNA makes RNA makes protein. DNA makes RNA makes protein. And it doesn't go back the way. Now, some viruses like HIV do have a special enzyme called reverse transcriptase that can do that, but normally that does not happen. It doesn't happen. So giving this RNA, this, this artificial messenger RNA, that will go to the ribosome. The ribosome will then produce the, uh, the spike proteins and these spike proteins will go to the surface of the cell like that. So in these cells in the arm you'll have these uh, a molecule which looks the same as the spike protein uh, as the uh, same as the spike protein on the, uh, the coronavirus 2. Uh, so that's partly what will happen but actually the main thing that will happen is that this um, messenger RNA will go into the, uh, the, uh, the muscle in the arm and it will go to the lymph nodes and you've got lymph nodes under your arm under there and those lymph nodes have special cells called um, antigen presenting cells and the RNA will go into those cells and those cells will present the the virus so what we have actually sorry I'm getting a bit complicated now but what we have is we have two sorts of these antigen presenting cells so yet yes the muscle cells in the arm will present the antigen but these are what we call non-professional cells their job is mostly mostly to contract so we can move our arm but they will present some but most of it will be presented by the specialized antigen presenting cells in in, in the lymphatics and of course all the excess fluid from the arm drains into the lymphatics uh, in in the uh, into these uh, auxiliary lymph nodes so what will happen is that whether it's a specialised antigen presenting cell or whether it's a muscle cell in the arm, these spike proteins from SARS coronavirus 2 will now be on the surface of the cell. Then the specialised cells from the immune system, these T cells, will come along and they will recognise they will recognise that particular type of antigen. And then these T cells that recognise it once they recognise and have learnt to recognise it, they will reproduce into huge numbers, uh, huge numbers of T-cells. And so we'll, we'll end up with a population of T-cells, these T-lymphocytes, and these will be able to recognise the, uh, the spike protein of the virus. So what that means is these T-cells can stimulate the B-cells, the B-lymphocytes, and these will make the antibodies. which is good, so that'll make the antibodies. But these T cells will also divide and we should be left with a population of what we call memory T cells, MT cells. And these memory T cells will remember the particular shape of this protein. And then if they come across, if these memory T cells come across a cell which is infected with these viral particles a second time, for example, if someone's been exposed to it, that's a, that's a cell that's been exposed to this virus and it's presenting the virus on the surface. So as when the virus gets into the cell, some of the viral proteins will express on the surface of the cell. This, this memory T cell will recognize this and will simply destroy the whole cell, therefore destroying the virus, therefore generating immunity.
So, so that that's how it that's how it's working. I hope you followed that. So it, it's remember it, it's not going to affect the DNA because it's um it's always a question of you know, DNA makes RNA makes protein. So this RNA, this artificial RNA, some of it will go into the cells in the arm, others of it will go into the um the antigen presenting cells in the in the lymph nodes and after a period of time it will just naturally degrade and it'd be as if it's not there but but by but before it degrades it will have made the proteins which are the same shape as the spike proteins and that is what will educate the immune system as to the nature of this virus and therefore make people immune to the virus so that's the way this is working it's not going to be affecting the the uh, DNA at all. Right, um, I'm not sure I meant to say all that actually, but anyway, I've ended up saying it. Um, so I think we'll just leave that there for now, otherwise it's gonna go on for a bit long this video. So um, uh, suffice to say, as soon as this vaccine is available, if, it, if it's passed phase three clinical trials, as it looks like it's doing, if it's approved by the national regulators, I'll be getting it as soon as I possibly can. Thank you for watching as always.